Welcome back. All right, so in talking about players from this this year's draft, uh, we're going to talk about Uri Slavkovsky, who has a chance to go first. And there are arguments to be made about whether or not Montreal might be better off picking up Slavkovsky, who is a winger. And one thing we see in a lot of drafts, wingers will often be the ones dropping, and the centers end up going earlier than we think they, they will. So Logan Cooley may end up being the number two guy. Center, a lot of a lot of potential there. I'll be talking about Cooley likely next in this playlist. But I'm thinking Slavkovsky might be interesting enough to New Jersey if they hold that number two pick to pick him. Uh, he's six foot four, 192 centimeters for those who measure their height in centimeters. Uh, 218 pounds or 99 kilograms if you look at the weight in, in kilos. Interestingly enough, in Canada we still look at the height as six foot four, five foot whatever. And the weight, we always talk about it in pounds because we're right next to the U.S. who still uses uh, all of the imperial measurements. So, Slavkovsky, his ranking isn't that high almost anywhere right now. So I'm, I'm not going off the board, but I'm anticipating where I think the final rankings may end up. The consolidated rankings, so this is elite prospects looking at them all put together. They have them at number three. <laughs> they have them number three. Three fingers. I have them at number two. They have them at three. Uh, Elite Prospects has them at five. I don't think that's their final ranking on the year, though. Hockey Prospect has them at number three. I know that's not their final ranking. And TSN slash Bob McKenzie has them at number five. I, I think there are enough I interesting aspects with Slavkovsky, who has rocketed up the chart. Um, before the Olympics, he was seen as maybe being a top 10 guy. The Olympics made his stock go through the roof. Now, if you want to argue for Shane Wright, he's a center. He's got the NHL projectable size, right? Uh, he's smart. He's a very good decision maker. He is going to be a good 200-foot player. So I still think that with Wright, he is still young enough because he's a teenager where he could reach the heights that were talked about for him before a rough season um, caused those expectations to drop. So I still think Wright could end up being a major star player, number one center. But he is seen as at worst as being maybe a number two center. Now, Slavkovsky can be spectacular absolutely fantastic great offensive instincts but there are concerns about sometimes his decision making on the ice and so the hockey iq is seen as being higher for right than it is for slavkovsky that can be changed that is absolutely something that can change the right organization new jersey might end up being a good spot for him and that again depends on whether or not new jersey moves the pick and there's there's talk about whether or not they could but I still think that he could be a target for whoever would acquire that number two pick. Not to take anything away from Logan Cooley. I, I went back and forth on this and I thought, you know what? There's so much hype about Slavkovsky. To me, it seems like he's a guy who's going to go really early. Um, and, and in terms of his strengths, uh, offense, puck handling, strength, teamwork are all brought up. Strength, obviously, 6'4", 218 pounds. This is not somebody who's going to come into the league as an 18-year-old, maybe as a 19-year-old. Right, depending on when he makes his debut in the NHL, he shouldn't be getting pushed around. He shouldn't be he shouldn't be a kid who's going to be, you know, rel relatively timid on the ice. Uh, one comparison I would use is maybe Svechnikov in Carolina. Svechnikov, more physical than I think people had had, had expected when he came into the league. Um, and now in terms of scouting, and I got this from Hockey Prospect. There's one scouting report said great second effort on the back check. So we're talking about his 200-foot game. There was another one. Nice assist on the power play. One-touch pass in the slot for a one-timer from a teammate. So the passing is there. The goal scoring is there. Good teammate. Everything seems to be there. So while with Wright, there's a lot of talk about his leadership and his skating. With Slavkovsky, there's just that, that elite level of offense that could very well translate at the NHL level. Now, this is where it gets interesting. It's interesting because if the decision-making doesn't get better, that's when you end up with a guy who may be very good on the power play, may not be great on the five on five. But uh, again, I think that that can be changed. Absolutely think that can be changed. And I, I think part of the reason why I like to be a beacon of positivity is uh, 2017. Uh, so because th that year, that draft was seen as being meh. And so I, I didn't put as much uh, oomph into that draft. And so, yeah, um, it ended up looking looking pretty bad personally. And, and I, you know, I fully own that. Absolutely fully own that. And since then, I've made sure that I have paid subscription with with Hockey Prospect. I've, I've talked with Elite Prospects multiple times. And I, I have a, a paid account with them as well. So uh, I get as much information on the draft as possible. 
Now, in terms of Slavkovsky, he plays on the under-20 under TPS team this year. 11 games, 6 goals, 12 assists, 18 points. Then he's moved up to TPS, the adult team, and 31 games, 5 goals, 5 assists, 10 points. In terms of playing in that league, those are good totals for a kid. Those are good totals for a teenager. He also played in the Holenka Gretzky Cup. Five games, he had three goals, six assists, nine points. So he has performed very well, but it's the Olympics. It's the Olympics that opened a lot of eyes to what he might be able to do. Uh, he did he did have great Olympics in 2022. He was the youngest to score an Olympic uh, goal. I was going to say an Olympic gold, but I'm like, that's not right. He was the youngest Olympian to score uh, in men's hockey since Eddie Olchick for Team USA in 1984. So... I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good comparison, right? Olchik was a good goal scorer in his time and very good teammate and all that fun stuff too. Uh, and he's the, he also helped to secure the first Olympic medal for Slovakia in men's hockey. Uh, played very well in the bronze medal game and helped to secure that for them. So that's when his stock really starts to go really, really quickly. And I saw articles saying maybe he's going to be a top 10. Now he's seen as a top five in all these draft lists, and I haven't seen anything to tell me that he can't continue to, to rise up. So again, uh, whether he goes at two or not, we'll see, but I think he could. Now, there's one interesting thing, and I thought, you know, and I'm getting this already, and I thought, you know, from a New Jersey perspective, you've got Patrick Eliash, right? Eliash uh, retires, uh, a Czech player, six foot, 190 pounds. He was a number 51 pick in 1994. Eliash ended up playing 20 years as a devil. Slavkovsky, Slovakian, right next to Czech. And it, honestly, his game projects out to be similar-ish to, to Ilyash, I guess. Um, I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but it just sort of happens. So you just sort of roll it. I'm just going to pretend it didn't happen. I'm not going to mention it. But Slavkovsky, I, I think it's going to be too much. I think it's just going to be too tempting. There's going to be a general manager very early in the draft that looks at the players available, looks at his looks at his numbers from the Olympics, looks at the fact he's already played against men and he's played quite well, and says, you know what, even though there might be another player on this list that's projected to maybe be a better pick or a safer pick, and with Wright, I think that's the safe pick. Montreal goes up, they grab Wright, that is a safe pick. That is a National Hockey League player. And whether he becomes a superstar or whether he's just an excellent top six forward, whatever it is, he should be a shoe-in to get one role or the other at the National Hockey League level. There's, I don't want to say boomer bust with Slavkovsky because I, I don't think the bust is, is as prominent with him as it is with others. But yeah, I, I think Slavkovsky is going to be pretty darn good and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. Uh, and, and so, yeah, uh, I'd be interested to know from other people watching this, where do you see Slavkovsky going in this year's draft? And I, honestly, for a New Jersey Devils uh, player too to have a long name on the back of their jersey, you can, you can just throw him on a line with Sharon Govich, and his name seems perfectly, you know, relatively quaint, comparatively speaking, to Sharon Govich. But for New Jersey, a team that doesn't really necessarily need another top six forward, and I'm saying not necessarily need another top six forward, I don't think you turn him down if they can't find a deal that they like at number two. But who do they pick? Uh, so let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Again, I think this draft, and sure, it, it, maybe maybe it's all sunshine and rainbows, and I'm just overly optimistic. I think this draft's going to be a good one, and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. So let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.